Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Network Engineer Stuff. So guys, in this video, we are going to focus on top 10 VLAN interview question and answers. So this video is going to be very useful for those who are preparing for routing switching interview and especially for those who are looking for switching interview stuff. So the question number one, what are the purpose of creating VLAN? So guys, whenever this question is asked, you have to mention this particular point that is broadcast control yes broadcast control is the main purpose of creating vlans so whenever you create the vlan the broadcast remains within the vlan which actually controls the broadcast so whenever we say that the broadcast remains within that vlan so the host can communicate with the other host in the same vlan so guys this is a answer which should always mention whenever answering this question that broadcast control is the main purpose of creating vlan again the other purpose of creating vlans is network segmentation so whenever we say about network segmentation basically because of this network admin can segment the user as per requirement or department like uh, uh, there in office, let's say there are various departments like HR department or IT department, admin department. So accordingly, the network admin can uh, assign those users into that different VLANs. So, so because of which, let's say there is an uh, IT guy, okay, he is in different VLAN. Let's say in VLAN uh, 10, and there are HR department, and which is in let's say VLAN 20. So. Uh, the the IT guy which is in uh, VLAN 10 cannot access the HR department resources. Let's say this is an HR server. So the IT guy which is in VLAN 10 cannot access cannot access the HR server which is in VLAN 20. So eventually this guy provides uh, something known as security. Again VLAN provides flexibility. So when we say flexibility that means a user can easily move across the physical location and still remains in the same vlan let's say there's a multi-floor office building a user is currently on the first floor and let's say he want to move on the third floor so he can easily move from first floor to the third floor and still remain in the same vlan so this is flexibility that is vlan provides flexibility so guys whenever this question is asked you have to mention this particular point this is a very 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 important point that what is the purpose of creating vlan and the main purpose of creating vlan is broadcast control so let's move to this question number two that is uh, how to delete vlan information on a switch now this is a bit a tricky question and uh, i have faced this question a couple of times so this vlan information guys always remember this vlan information is not is not saved in the running configuration or in the startup configuration of the switch but it is saved in a separate file which is vlan.dat on the flash memory of the switch so whenever you want to delete this vlan information you should delete this file from the flash memory of the switch and the command to delete it is very simple it is delete flash this is because the it's a location where that vlan information file is followed by the name of that file which is vlan.dat so this vlan.dat is the file name so this is guys again a very very tricky question and i thought that i should mention this question question number three what are access port and trunk ports so again this is a very commonly asked question but uh, you know and most people also know this uh, know, know the answer of this question who are studying vlan but i still thought of mentioning this particular question because uh, this is a very common asked question so trunk ports trunk ports are the ports which carries multiple vlan traffic that is the port which which are the member of multiple vlan so the port which is member of the multiple vlan so so that port is a trunk port and uh, um, 
access port are those ports which carries traffic of only single VLAN. So that port will be member of only a single VLAN. So let's say this is a switch. Okay, this is a switch, and uh, let's say this is a PC, a user. So this port will be an access port because this will be into a single VLAN. So this port will be the member of a single VLAN, let's say VLAN 10. And whereas a trunk port, basically it is configured between a switch and uh, another switch where, where uh, traffic of multiple uh, VLANs need to be carried. So this trunk port, so this port and let's say this port will be member of multiple VLANs uh, and by default on trunk port that is on this ports trunk ports traffic of all the VLANs is allowed but we can again you know be selective in that that we have to allow let's say a traffic of certain VLANs and you know deny the traffic of certain VLANs so let's say I've configured like you know I can configure that okay by default VLAN 10 and 20 traffic should be allowed on this particular trunk port so guys this is again a question which is commonly or frequently asked in VLAN interview question. So always remember trunk port carries traffic of multiple VLANs and access port carries traffic of single VLAN. So guys question number four what is meant by inter VLAN routing. So guys in question number one we saw that VLAN divides the broadcast domain that is the by creating the VLANs we basically do the uh, broadcast control and uh, so what happens that the host uh, can communicate with the host in the uh, in the same VLAN. So let's say there is a VLAN uh, 10. So there are multiple hosts let's say here. And this is VLAN 20. Okay. So this host can communicate with this host and this host. Similarly this host can communicate with this host and this host. Now this is what the basic idea behind VLAN is by creating VLAN is you know because of this the communication will remain within that VLAN now this kind of communication is known as intra VLAN communication it is known as intra VLAN communication or we can say intra VLAN switching uh, because the traffic is switched within the same VLAN now, whenever let's say there's a user over here in VLAN 10 and this want to communicate with a user in VLAN 20, how will this happen? This will happen, this is possible and this will happen by something known as inter VLAN routing. This is, can happen with inter VLAN routing. Now, the traffic between the VLAN is routed. The traffic within the VLAN is switched. I'll repeat again. The traffic within the VLAN is switched and the traffic between the VLAN is routed. So it is known as inter VLAN routing and this can be achieved by uh, by the creating SVI or by using router on stick. I think on router on stick I have made a video. I will uh, yes, I have made a video on that. So I will paste uh, the link of that video in the in the description section of this video guys. You can check out that video as well. So guys this is again a uh, very important question which I have mentioned that is what is meant by inter VLAN routing. So guys question number 5 that is what are the difference between ISL and 801.802.1Q. So guys this 802.1Q is nothing but dot one q. So always remember this is the same thing 802.1Q is dot one q so now guys we are aware that this trunk port okay we just saw in this previous question that what are trunk ports so trunk ports are those ports which carries traffic of multiple vlan now to achieve the trunking on this trunk port to achieve the trunking on the trunk port to make the trunk port capable that it should carry traffic of multiple vlans we need some protocol so there are two protocols which are available one is isl that is inter switch link and the other protocol is that is this ieee 802.1q which is dot one 
Q. Now, these are the two protocols, but I'll say that the most commonly used or I think almost everywhere dot one Q is only used. Now, there are few differences between these two protocols. One and the very important is that ISL is Cisco proprietary. So it will be supported only on uh, Cisco switches, whereas dot one Q is industry standard. So it will be supported on 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 like Cisco switches, Juniper switches, Huawei switches, so everywhere it is supported. Now the interviewer can also ask the question in, in a different way. Let's say uh, there is a Cisco switch, okay, and uh, let's say there's a Juniper switch, and a, between these two switch, a trunk, a trunk is configured, okay, a trunk link is configured. So we have to configure this trunk link. Let's say what is required, uh, whether you'll use ISL or whether you use dot one Q. So the answer will be dot one Q because ISL Juniper uh, switches won't support ISL. Now, apart from this, there is another difference uh, in ISL and dot one Q is that so let's say there's a switch over here and there's another switch over here so in isl the original frame so let's say this is my original frame so this original frame is encapsulated with uh, this 26 byte let's say 26 byte header and a 4 byte of fcs so this fcs is a 4 byte so total 26 plus 4 which is 30 so 30 bytes of overhead is added whenever ISL is used on the trunk port fine whereas whenever we are going for this dot one Q let's say this is a switch this is another switch this is trunk so whenever ISL is there and let's say this is a frame so in that frame this dot one q will insert a four byte four bytes tag okay this will insert a four byte tag into this original frame now this tag will be inserted let's say this is a sender and let's say this is a receiver switch this is a receiver switch this is a sender switch so the sender switch on this particular port a tag will be inserted and at this port this tag will be removed so whenever the tag is inserted or whenever the tag is removed that is you are modifying that original frame the crc will be calculated so here the crc will be calculated twice one at the sender and other one at the receiver whereas in isl the original frame is not modified the original frame is as it is you know, because we are encapsulating this with this header and this FCS so the original frame is not modified so here there is no CRC calculation so this is what is mentioned here in this slide that uh, ISL uh, original frame is not modified whereas dot one q original frame is modified and so the CRC is new CRC is calculated again uh, this is very important uh, difference you can mention uh, that is ISL uh, is uh, is not supported on Cisco NX OS whereas dot one Q is supported on Cisco NX OS that is on the Cisco Nexus which is so whenever you mention this point this will give you give a different impression whenever you are basically uh, I will say appearing for uh, the data center interviews you know because in data centers nexus switches are used and if you mention this point it will give a good impression so i think uh, we'll move with question number six seven eight and nine and ten uh, in another video so i'll make a part two of this video and you can watch that video also so for this video i'll stop here I'll catch up you in this part two of villain interview question and answers till then bye thanks and have a nice